The Icarus base was an off-world Tory base built in 2007. 21 light years from Earth on the planet P4X 351 in the Milky Way galaxy, which housed a Stargate. It contained a runway and several F-302 fighter interceptors. It was also protected by a number of RGBBT-SG military-mounted gun emplacements. The base itself was unique in that it was built into a planet that had a unique Nequadria core, which provided sufficient power to dial a ninth Chevron address. This planet was the first world discovered to naturally produce Nequadria, the other being an Icarus-type planet discovered by the Lucian Alliance. Nequadria was also produced on another world in the Milky Way galaxy called Langara, artificially. Nequadria is known to be highly unstable, and while it emits tremendous energy, it also emits an equivalent amount of radiation as it destabilizes, giving the core of the planet a unique radioactive state. As an added safety feature, due to its highly volatile nature of the core, the Stargate deployed on this world was configured in such a way that it could not receive incoming wormholes, as such an event could have triggered instability in the planet. The Stargate itself was configured to draw power directly from the planet's core, rather than the attached DHD, so it could dial a 9th Chevron address once the coordinates were successfully unlocked. The base itself was constructed inside a mountain on the surface of a planet, much like Stargate Command, and various off-world Tauri bases in the Milky Way galaxy. The mountainside had a single defense emplacement which housed the RGBBT gun emplacements and several additional 50 caliber weapons. Icarus Base also housed a type of shielding in the bunker complex that prevented the transport with Asgard transporters. This was designed to prevent intruders from entering the facility via this technology. Instead, personnel and equipment were beamed to the outer defensive area and brought inside. The base housed a number of military and civilian personnel, including some not directly related to the research project. At some point, the base on P4X351 was used as a Lucian Alliance mining facility. A Tari operative within the Alliance revealed it to Stargate Command as a possible location for the Icarus project. According to Senator Armstrong, the total cost of the Icarus base, including operations and maintenance, is 1.6 billion US dollars. In 2009, the George Hammond was sent to transport Dr. Nicholas Rush, Eli Wallace, Senator Armstrong, and Chloe Armstrong to the Icarus base to attempt to dial the Stargate's ninth chevron. The cost of the Icarus base was so much that the funding of which nearly cost Senator Armstrong his entire career, and without his belief in the program, it never would have been approved. In 2009, the Lucene Alliance launched a force of several Hatak motherships, death gliders, and troop ships, which attacked the Icarus base as part of their campaign against the Tari. This prompted an evacuation. In the ensuing battle, Colonel David Telford engaged the attacking forces in an F-302 fighter interceptor. In desperation, Dr. Nicholas Rush, with the help of Eli Wallace, figured out how to dial the 9th Chevron address. Using Earth's point of origin, they cracked the code, and Rush dialed the Stargate to the ancient vessel Destiny instead of Earth. The base's personnel were able to evacuate. When the base came under attack, the core of the planet was destabilized, resulting in the complete destruction of the planet. The attacking allied forces failed to anticipate this outcome, resulting in the complete destruction of the attacking fleet. The USS George Hammond, which was defending the base from orbit, managed to locate all but approximately 80 of the Icarus base personnel and evacuate before the planet was destroyed. Colonel Samantha Carter reported that the remaining personnel, who could not be accounted for, were inside the base and could not be beamed out. However, readings indicated that the Stargate was active for six minutes before the planet's core went critical. It wasn't until Rush reported to the Homeworld Command from Destiny via the long-range communication device that General Jack O'Neill and others learned that these people were safe, albeit stranded, aboard the ship. 